opinion, but if, but I would appreciate it if you would have some opinions. Yay, Scott. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know Good that, morning. Um, morning. <laughs> I know that uh, um, that's, that's one thing that, that I'm trying to perfect is kind of the pass off from prepping the action to the person that installs the hammers that we've got to we've got to kind of make sure that that people are communicating and any complaints that the people that are installing hammers have um, that all of those complaints get to or concerns I guess is a better word get to the people that are actually doing the hammer butt prep work in particular and I think correct me if I'm mistaken but I think that's where the biggest um, Maybe, maybe room for error. I think everything else on the action yeah, basically is. I think so. We've got that pretty well nailed down. Whereas the hammer butts, maybe sometimes the angles are off a little bit, or they're not deep enough, or they're not centered on the hammer butt, or s stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Where's your action, McKinley? Okay. Nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful, clean, nice, yeah. Easier to soda blast anyway after we get the hammer butts off. So let's just get started. Um, let's start by uh, numbering, or we could maybe take the spring rail off. And let's number all the all the hammer butts somewhere. I'd like to number them uh, somewhere where they won't be noticed, where they won't be seen by just kind of the casual observer. Somewhere where we where we can see them to put them back on in order, but uh, um, won't be seen by you know future technicians that are working on the piano. Okay, and this is one, this is actually, this is a tricky one to do your first time because it's these, this brass, this brass rail. Is that what Jake told you? Uh, Did he, he didn't say anything. Yet. Talk about the brass rail. Um, Jake, we get there, Scott, that light. So, um, so the brass rail is, is how, um, how some manufacturers attach the hammer butts and it's kind of a bother. Um, I don't particularly care for it. It doesn't give you much maneuverability in the future. And plus when they break, uh, it's, it's a hassle to, to repair. Um, but. <laughs> Pun. What's that? My piano has brass flanges. Oh. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's also, it's also a bother, um, because when you when you glue in the hammers, uh, sometimes as as perfectly straight and, and aligned to the strings as you can get it, when the glue dries, it just kind of that hammer eases over a little bit. So that that's something that, that you kind of have to watch when you're installing the hammers. And sometimes, I mean, more than more often than not, uh, you can't really stay on top of it, and so you just kind of have to um, deal with it after the fact. And so with, uh, with wooden flanges, which is the traditional method of attaching the hammers, it's, it's pretty easy to just loosen that screw, put the hammer over, and then tighten it. And even though there's a rail that's supposed to align that hammer flange, um, there's still some, some movement. Whereas these brass flanges, there's nothing. There's no movement at all. And so really everything, everything that you do, you have to do with... Um, with that little, there it is. All of the shank bending, you do heat it up, and it more often than not leaves burn marks, which we want to avoid, but often unavoidable. Okay, so let's take off spring rail, number the um, hammer butts. And uh, start taking them off. So we need some screwdrivers. You got a pencil? Pencil. Okay. 
And then, like I mentioned a minute ago, when you sun blast McKinley, um, having the having those hammers out out of the way is just it's it's much more accurate, um, much more like it can get into the little nooks and crannies. I wonder if we should take off the um, the rest rail, rest rail as well. To yeah, make some Do you? Do you prefer not to? It's a lot easier to work with it off. Yeah. But it tends to go on a little crooked, which can mess with the blow distance. Yeah. Well. So pros and cons. Um. Well, rather than bending, I think the reason that it goes that it. Uh, goes on crooked is because it's the way we've been taking it off is by bending the, the one uh, mm -hmm. the one thing whereas if we take it off by removing one of the um, action brackets it shouldn't go back on oh. crooked yeah Why don't we do it then? I think we should I think people are just <laughs> either unaware or lazy Okay, which one we take it off? Okay, it goes in that way and that way. So we can take this one off. Do you know what we're talking about, Mr. It's, it's a lot easier to, to work with the action, especially the level of rebuilding that we're doing um, with it off. And actually, this one, we don't have to take the, um, the entire bracket off. So, so the way that we have been taking it off is we've been bending one of the... So this is this is actually a really nice um, design because it's just a screw. Whereas other hammer hammer uh, rest rail designs, you have to either bend. One of them. As you see how those two they come down and go that way, mm -hmm. and then this one comes down and goes the opposite way. That's how the how it stays. And so you so what we've been and bending it to get it off, but then the problem with that is when you put it back on, it tends to go on a little bit crooked, which um, causes problems for regulation when it goes on crooked. Um, and so what I was suggesting a minute ago yeah. is rather than bending this, this little bracket here, just to take off, take this thing off, yeah. off of the rails, which would allow it to come off. But this design is even easier than that. Okay, we get a piece of tape and label that mm -hmm. with the brand and serial number. I'm just going to cut off all of these um, bridle straps rather than 
take them off just to, you know, make it easy for now, since we're going to be replacing them anyway. And McKinley, this too. This is this is larger than an inch and a quarter, but um, but that'll be all right. Just make sure you don't use so much glue that it uh, um, oozes out over the top and gets onto the onto the top of this. I would like this to be flush with the top, so this will this will be slightly narrower. But I'd like it to be flush with the top, not flush with the bottom. Okay. Okay. And use, you know what type of glue to use? Um, I think so, the black, the, I don't know what it's called. PVCE? Yeah. And it's white. Oh, okay. It's not black glue. Okay. So that's in there. I'll order some one of those. Um, and then clean this up so that it, just so that it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. um, Clean these up just with some Scotch Brite. You could take this off again, and since it just just again, no no functional reason, just because we're rebuilding the whole piano, so we want to make that look pretty and then screw it back on. Um, and then with this, replace replace this cloth here, and then. The rest of that you can probably just clean up with um, the, uh, oh, what's it called? Scott, what's that cleaner called that we use for wood? The, um, it, it, we mix it? TSP. TSP. Thank you. Yeah. Just clean that. The TSP will get this hundred years of grime and stuff right off, mm -hmm. and then and and make sure they stay labeled. And and when you're done with them, just put them on the in the cabinetry room with the with the piano so they don't get lost. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. So uh, for those of you who are joining us, what we're doing is uh, as as part of our rebuilding process. Um, we clean the piano extremely thoroughly, so so let's let's have a look at McKinley's work. He's been working on this what for for like four or five full days. Yeah. Yeah. So this piano is about a hundred years old, a little bit over a hundred years old, and it was it was disastrously filthy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, and now it's gorgeous, complete with polishing polishing up these kinds of little finishing touches and scrubbing the strings to get any kind of corrosion off and replacing replacing this back rail cloth replacing these little cloths scrubbing all of that clean mm -hmm. polishing these kinds of things and getting all of those immaculately clean yeah rebuilding rebuilding the trap work that's beautiful um, you should get a flashlight that's so pretty so those, so clean. Yeah, it is beautiful. Those are so disgusting. Ooh, and those petals look nice. Those, this trap work down here is so disgusting when, when these pianos come in mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, there's literally cobwebs and, and... Sometimes critters and... <laughs> some, yeah, sometimes you get little mice. All sorts. And all of these little, uh metal connections are um, are covered in um, corrosion. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have to replace the base bridge. The base bridge. 
with that crack right there. Yeah, see that? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to mm -hmm. cut that off. Got a little piece of steel wool right there. How much does clinging the strings help with the the sound? Like is it hugely I don't know. I don't... Mm. Um I I want to say that it helps, especially with um, false beats. Um, is that your question, or is that it's a question? Mine. That, no, it's mine. It's your question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you get corrosion, um, especially in the high treble, mm -hmm. and that causes false beats. And what that looks like is uh, when you're when you're tuning the piano, rather than the 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 note just peaking in one place, you get two peaks. So you're literally, out of one string, you're getting two different tones simultaneously. And they're slightly, um, they're, they're separated from each other by maybe a few cents. And so that causes false beats. And so when you remove that corrosion, that's, that's the theory anyway. Fixes those false beats, and then also McKinley, you, you spent probably at least a day cleaning back here, right? Yeah. yeah. Very disgusting. Yeah. That looks great. Nice job. One thing I would like for you to do is I would like you to replace these casters. Oh yeah, that's right. With, uh, that's right. with rubber, rubber caster. Sometimes you have to route out so that the panel is back right now. But we do not. Sometimes you have to route out that little, um, that little uh, recessed area mm -hmm. so that the so that the caster can can move 360 degrees all the way around without without touching the touching that area at all. You know where the casters are. We've got thanks to our buddy Tyler. We've got a lot of them. Yep, good job. It's really nice. That'll be a fun um, face bridge. With the top surface, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you can do that after you clean. Yeah. And then leave um, maybe glue only up to there so that you can still unscrew that. Yeah. Okay, so so I was I was actually filling in um, what we're what we're actually doing. So when we rebuild the piano, we, we put the piano through this, this really, really intense pre-cleaning and prep process. So the cleaning alone takes about five full days, um, and, then the, uh, and then the action prep takes another three to five days. Um, so it's really, really an intense process. And that's how, that's how we get pianos that you know, look, look like this. This piano, same thing. Um, it was it's about 100 years old, 100 and probably a little bit more, 110 years old, and uh, and it was a disaster, just like all pianos from that era. But now you can see it's just beautifully clean. Hammers look just amazing. The dampers look amazing. Let's see how it sounds. I think this piano's actually ready. We're just waiting on her to decide um, if 
she wants us to refinish it or not. And then and the action, or the, the trap work rather, down there is, is beautifully rebuilt, all clean and all the felt and leather and everything is all replaced. And the wood is all sanded down, smooth, clean. So um, before we can before we can install new dampers, install new hammers and shanks, all of this prep work has to be done. So uh, the the major um, I guess point where the kind of the business end of the action is the is the hammer butt that supports the, the hammers. So that's really the key, the, kind of the, the focus of our of our work. Of course, everything else is 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 done very very well and, and cleaned immaculately. But but really, where we spend the majority of the time making it is the the hammer butts. So that's what we're that's what we're focusing on here today is getting all these hammer butts off um, so that we can start rebuilding the hammer butts. Hey Jake, hey. have you been, um, I'd like you to remove this, uh, these things and get those um, buffed. What's that? Yeah, like shined up. Yeah, yeah. shined up. Mm -hmm. Will you teach McKinley how to remove these, these little rods here? To get those buffed and shined up. Oh, okay. It's the same concept as the rest rail, where you've got three or four hangers, um, all, all but one of which go one direction, and then the other one. So you've got to find the other one that goes the opposite direction, take off that little, uh, I guess it's a, a flange. That holds it on. So it's, you take off that one flange and then you can slide everything else out. All right.
Okay, I'm here they are. I think I stole the good screwdriver. Some kind of little thing makes it hard to turn. I'm gonna take a picture. Do you guys wanna smile? Like look at the camera. Look at this one. This is mine. Okay, you too, Jake. Okay, one, two, three. Thanks. Hammer that <laughs> needs help. <laughs> wow, it's about as flat as I've ever seen. That's uh, that is flat. Man, that's just a bugger. <laughs> just... It's because it's stripped. A little bit. What do you do? You're gonna take that off first. Hey, Jake. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with uh, cleaning? Blasting the hammer butts. Um, do you put them back on before you blast the entire action, or do you blast the entire action? I pla I sort of blast the entire action first. Hmm. Okay. You mean before we? Before. Took the hammer butts? We, mm -hmm. Okay. Well. That's what I've always done. Sort of blast first. I need to replace that screw.
pin thing. So this is really the focus of uh, Sorry, Stacey. Um, of your work is making sure that everything on the hammer butt is in excellent condition. There are a few points that we're going to focus on. Do we have like a suede brush? Or, or like a little... Not sure what that is. A little, uh, little brush. Like a toothbrush? Um, a little bit stiffer, so not like a steel brush, but not, not as... Not yeah. as... Like I have a toothbrush. <laughs> Not as gentle as a toothbrush, somewhere in between. Brass be too much? Uh, we can try it. Yeah, it's, yeah that feels good. Kind of soften that up a little bit. Yeah, some sometimes. It's best to replace these. This leather on the catcher. But I think the leather on this on these catchers is pretty good. And I think it would be probably overkill to to replace them all together. But you can, yeah, kind of soften them up a little bit. Where'd you find this, by the way? Some of the icing drawer. Perfect. Yeah. I think there's two or three of them in there. So yeah, that cleans it up. Ooh, it does clean it up. Huh? Softens them. Buenos días. Buenos días. Good morning. Bien. Si? ¿Y tú? Bien. Si? Gracias para los coyotes. ¿Está buenas? Si. Son terminados. ¿Ya? Yeah, ¿Terminados? Si. Sí. <laughs> bueno. Muy bien. Okay, so... Gracias, Julio. So there'll be... Um, one, two, three, four, five points that, that you'll focus on. So the five points, clean up that leather. So we want that leather nice and, well, clean, clean just for cosmetic purposes. It doesn't really matter, but, um, but I want that leather, any, any kind of wear. I want it removed with that brush. Sometimes this leather is so badly worn that it, it is worn clear through to the wood. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, which is, I think, what was done on that piano? Is that new leather? Mm -hmm. It looks That's like it, yeah. Leather. Right yeah. 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 It's new. Sometimes it's worn so far that you've got to do that. Whereas this leather is, I mean, there's still a, There's still a ton left. Right, yeah. So it would be completely overkill to, to redo the leather here. So that's that's the first point. Second is the bridle strap. So we're just gonna so try and try and get rid of the bridle straps all the way at the base. So the way I do that is get it nice and tight and then twist. Let's go this way. Well, it didn't pull it out as well as I had hoped. Let's try a razor blade. We have a razor blade over there. Thank you. Just want to remove um, any. Uh, 
place of the old bridle straps. Oh, and then also, I'd like you to feel the joint. Give it, so I'm, I'm giving it some good pressure. I want you to make sure that all of these joints, either, either where the catcher goes into the catcher shank or the shank goes into the hammer butt. Just give it a good twist mm -hmm. like that. Um, I mean, not so much that it breaks the shank, but not so little that if there's, a, if there's any um, movement, you can't feel it. You gotta be able to feel the movement. And if there is any movement at all, then then you've got to work it loose, even if you've got to get out like maybe the parallel pliers and, and, then, and then give it more and more until you can pull it out and then re-glue it. You just have to make sure it's seated all the way because if it's not seated all the way, when it's next to a neighbor, it'll be further out. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's six, six points. So... Leather, bridle strap, slash bridle strap there, getting rid of that. Let's bolster these with some, um, some yarn. That'll get rid of, you see how the, where that jack has been rubbing on the leather there? Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of indented. So the, um, the yarn will mostly take care of all of that. Then we're going to repin it here. And I want you to cut this off here. So let's uh, let's go over all of those steps so that we can we can get it has mostly to do with the boring. the boring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty important. Okay, so give that a Give that one a feel, or, or maybe start start a new one so you can do one from scratch. Like someone had a little too much fun with the lighter. Yeah, I noticed those yeah. too. Like, that's that's pretty bad. Burn the hammers. Yeah. That's... Oh really? Burn the hammers. I wonder, <laughs> yep. I wonder if it was a torch. <laughs> someone did the blood torch. That looks like it. <laughs> They're not coming out super crisp, are they? You can have to use all of them. Do they ever just pull out easily? The bridle straps? Do they, do they sometimes come out easier than this? Like just some more than others. Just depends. Let's see if I could just do it with my hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got a, a lot of it. After 88 times, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> You'll be like, all right, got it. You know how to do this, Stacy? Strain the knuckles. <laughs> oh. You know what that that's, is? that's an easy way to do it. Do you know what that is? It helps you thread the needle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. Okay. Um, I never use them. Because <laughs> you're so thread, good at thread. Yeah, I can I thread pretty good. Anything. Unless it's dark. <laughs> That's a nice way to thread a needle, though. I know. My mom needs one of those. We're already, we already got one threaded, though, so...
how many. Uh... Did you do it? One handed? No, it was already threaded. <laughs> that would have been cool though. It was already threaded? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're like, wow. That's really impressive. <laughs> no, I should have let him think that. Just kidding. No. no. <laughs> Uh, have you found any loose catchers? So that'd be a good. No. I've been looking at a few. But no, they all seem pretty good. Okay. Okay. okay, we have 10 minutes. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh it looks. This is what it looks uh, like. Or I might have just broken it. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's loose now. Isn't that good though to break them before if they're gonna? No, I mean, it might have actually like oh. splintered the wood. Oh, just kidding. Okay, moving on to this. Sewing time. Okay, in 10 minutes, um, I would like to get to, uh, to cutting that off. Okay, so we've already done the, we've already done this, and it's actually it's actually a good idea, I think, for for the sake of efficiency, to. Uh, Streamline it? To do like all of the brushing and then all of the repinning and then you know do all of those. But for the sake of kind of education, we'll mm -hmm. we'll go through go through one. That's nice and clean and nice and uh, frictiony, mm -hmm. which is what we want. We've got that off, we've got that off. Uh, okay. So what the yarn will do is it'll it'll bolster this um, this leather. Sometimes we replace these as well, but these are in really good condition, mm -hmm. so we're not going to worry about that. So I'm going to put this right under this point here, so it's going to be closer closer to to this, not not on not after the ledge. So we want to get it kind of underneath the ledge area, sort mm -hmm. of bolster that ledge. So I'm going to put it in between the leather and the red felt, right there. Okay. Okay. So that's like right where the jack, um, rests when it's poised to make its push up on the butt. Okay, you see how that got rid of most of that uh, kind of indentation. Mm -hmm. And let's we have me one of those orange snipper. These are good because they're uh, flush cutters. You know what I mean by flush cutters? Yeah, it cuts it as close as that black off pretty good too. Yeah.
that's that's pretty good. Yeah. It does look a lot better. And it'll be a nice um, surface for the um, for the jack. For the jack. Jack is. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Okay. So by putting yarn in, it's stretching this part out. Yeah, it's it's called bolstering. Um, so yeah, it just kind of pushes it out a little bit. Um, it's almost like bolstering the knuckles on a grand. That's exactly what exactly it what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not almost. That is it. All right. How soon do you have to go, Scott? Ten minutes, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk repinning. Um, why don't I talk repinning, and then I've got to go. Okay. And then, um, and then if you could talk about um, boring. Sure. So repinning. Let's see. Why don't I go at this angle, right here? So if I'm at this angle, it'll hit the, did you see how it kind of hit the mm -hmm. pliers there? Or if it's, a, if, it, if I'm too far up, then it, I can't get it up. So I'm, maybe at that angle, I can start it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's about eight swings. So it's a little bit, um, a little bit too much. So what should it be? I like it three or four, um, seven, Yeah, two is kind of the edge, and seven is the other edge. Okay, so this tool here, first thing you do is push out the pin. Make sure that when you're pushing out the pin, that you don't push out the bushing. That's garbage. Okay, one one nice thing. Um, this is actually a um, an advantage, I think, of the brass flange is you don't have to pick a target pin. It, this is a slightly easier, less involved process to repin the, um, the hammer butt when it's a brass flange than when, it is when, when you've got a hammer flange to, a wooden hammer flange to, to do it to. Okay. Um, you have me a burnisher. So you just need to go a larger size. Yeah, all you have to do so, yeah. you with it when you fits for that specific wooden flange. But with this, you can just you can just remove a little bit of material and go a little bit larger. And whatever size you choose, I mean, you don't want to go too big. You'd want to just go slightly larger. But whatever size you choose, the brass flange will just clamp to it. So you don't have to yeah. have a specific. Okay, so do you see how one is one is sharp, and then one is yeah smooth. So uh, this is a reamer, this is a burnisher. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like go in and and really ream it out. I'm just gonna go into the point of a little bit of resistance, which on this is just barely in there because it's tapered gets wider and wider. Okay. I'm just going in until I feel a little bit of resistance and all I'm doing is just kind of giving it a fresh, that, that was all it took, like it only went to there. Yeah. Just giving it kind of fresh new um, felt. This one, I'll go in maybe a little bit more. It's nice to be able to go back and forth but um, there's not much coming out there, and I'm just, it, you always risk when you go back and forth, pushing that, and you feel on your, on your lip right here, if it's heated, then you're good. If, there's, if you're generating a little heat, then that means you're ironing it, which is what you want. So that first one cuts the felt, and the second one irons it. And yeah, I've got a little heat. Okay, so now I can 
just guess. Looks like I need to order some pins too. And you'll kind of get a feel for it. So like that one, it's, 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 there's some friction in there, but not, um, not super tight. One, two, so it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's good. You know, I'm at the kind of the two and a half ish to four range, which is where I want to be. That's where I like it. Okay, so you, you'll get a feel for how much friction um, you want when you just feel that by hand. Like, you know, to me that feels good. And, and it was, it was you know, three ish. So, okay, give that a feel. Putting that pin. And, uh, on each side. Feel how it's tight, but not so tight that yeah. that it feels like a blockage. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and put it all the way through. Test it again. This. Yeah, 45 degree angle. Good. Yeah. Okay, push that through so it's all the way flush. And then with the flush cutters, cut it off on the other side. Jake can teach you this. That's that's very straightforward. That's done with, with all of these tools. Is the yeah, it's straightforward. And then Scott, if you can teach boring, that'd be great. And then I'll take my phone. So um, okay. So we got to cut out. Thanks, Stacy.